Jenny, you want to talk first about how you got into writing? No, only, it's only. Out. Are we, are we like, are we no, like no, no. going? Are we like going from the oldest to the youngest? Or are we going from the youngest to the oldest? Because then you know, that'll make your decision as to who goes first. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. All right, ready? Yeah, as long as you tell them about your bunny hopping roots and everything else on your first ride. Okay, well you can let me know if I leave anything out. Okay. Okay. So I started mountain biking. Um, Just about two and a half years ago, I was a runner, and I had uh, completed a ultra run, an ultra race, and needed a break. And um, Justin had suggested that I try mountain biking. And now I had a road bike. I had, I had. Road bikes really don't kind of count. As biking or... I had a road bike for um, two triathlons. I think you'll irritate a lot of people with that. And I think there is some training justification on a road bike. So wheels okay. or wheels or wheels okay. or wheels. Wheels. Okay. wheels, right? Wheels. So I had a road bike that I used for two triathlons, and I hated it. I hated it as much as I hated the swimming. So I was reluctant to try mountain biking, but we went ahead. I rented a bike. From full so you like the Unoathlon. Right. <laughs> uh, running. <laughs> so I like to run. It's exactly what I <laughs> So I rented a bike, and we went uh, to Granite Bay, and we went around Granite Bay, and I unexpectedly loved it because it was on the trails, and I immediately, as Justin alluded to was like can we hop this can we go down these rocks what how does this work I couldn't even shift gears um had no idea which break was what and so I ended up getting a bike a mountain bike right after that um through a friend I was lucky enough to get a bike through him and I quickly learned that if I didn't get skills I was gonna die and Justin was I I felt like I was gonna die because I was having to try to teach her how to use her gears and how to shift (laughs) and she wasn't happy with the way that I was telling her how to shift the gears Uh, so my life was in danger too yeah so um Justin was super supportive and he actually because he was taking me on trails like Downeyville things like that that were way above my that's that's the way to throw you in (laughs) yeah my skill level sink or swim so I was as Paige learned later when we met I was just hanging off the back Hoping for the best everywhere I went. I just I just crashed my way down trails. And so I, I, I'm like, I need skills. I tried watching videos online. It didn't work. I, uh, through Justin, went through, he found a clinic in Nevada City. So I went there, went to that um, clinic, and I met other women. And that was like a huge eye-opener for me because when I first started mountain biking, I'm like, where are all the women? They're everywhere in running. And not so much in mountain biking. I was often the only girl on a ride, as most of us girls are. And also, I was really taken aback how there was no, there wasn't equal choices in apparel, gear, that kind of thing. I would go to buy shoes, and there'd be two colors. Of course, one's pink every time. Justin can go buy shoes, and there would be ten choices of flats to choose from. And the same with um, shorts, jerseys, that kind of thing. So I said about looking for the women. I met them through at the skills clinic that I went to in Nevada City. Ended up uh, hosting a maintenance clinic through Auburn Bike Company and started a Facebook group called Women's MTB Experience to find the women, to encourage women to try mountain biking because it was so it was so incredible, so fun, and I knew if we could get women into it, they would love it. And that's how I met Paige. So I met Paige through Auburn Bike Company. Curtis, the owner, introduced us. And so, Paige, I'll stop there and let you tell your story before we talk about how So you want to know how I got into mountain yes. biking and when I started mountain biking? Uh-huh. Um, so I got my first mountain bike in, uh, in 1991, 92. I was teaching skiing in Winter Park, Colorado. And everyone said, get a bike. You got to get a mountain bike. It's the most awesome thing ever. So I got a bike. And mostly I rode it to college. I moved down to Denver and I rode it back and forth to school. And then I had a girlfriend who says, uh, let's go up to this, let's go up to this bike race. There's a Norman Nationals in Warner Park, so let's go up to this race. And I'm like, yeah. she goes, there will be a lot of guys there. 
I'm like, okay, let's go up to this bike race. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, we go up to this bike race and she took me on the dirt for the first time. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like skiing and riding a horse at the same time. It's the best sport ever. So I absolutely loved it. And uh, we rode up, um, what was a, a green run that we used to, that we'd ski down and teach the easiest run on the mountain. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. And then we got into single track and I, it was the greatest thing ever. But then we went and we, uh, we watched the racers and we watched, we watched specifically downhill racers. And on that day I looked at her and I said, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to be a pro mountain bike racer. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And I said, I'm going to race downhill, but I, I'm going to be a pro mountain. I'm going to be a pro mountain bike racer. So we went home and we went bike shopping because I was riding, you know, a bike. I, I was riding a Univega kind of just, it was a mountain bike, but I, I needed a better bike. So we went home and uh, we spent the next month and a half shopping for bikes. And I spent my student loans on a new bike. That's awesome. That's the way you do college. Yes. Is you uh, on on the on the uh, on the receipt will eat peanut butter for the next year was written um, so that I could buy my first bike, which is a Mantis XCR, beautiful polished aluminum bike, and uh, I proceeded to crash my way up and down every trail um, in Colorado <laughs> and the Front Range. I, I learned how to ride on Dakota Ridge, one of the hardest trails in. The front range. Um, and so, yeah, I spent a lot of time bloody, too. I do recall that. Um, yeah, so that's how, that's how I got started. So how did the two of you start working together? So, like I said, I met Paige at um, Auburn Bike Company. And if I remember correctly, we had tried to email each other and I ended up <laughs> running into her and we just started talking and well, yeah, you had the wrong email address yes. so we kept we kept missing each yeah. other yeah so she joined the Facebook group I had uh, got a couple friends together and we took a clinic from Paige at North Star and it was hands down the best clinic I had ever taken and Paige's instruction just fit my learning style and I loved it. I learned so much. Her tips and techniques were exactly what I was looking for. And so and so I was super excited to take that clinic from her and I wanted to host more skills clinics for her so that I could learn from her. And so what I did is I just kept bugging Paige and <laughs> saying, let's do a clinic, let's do a clinic. And I would... I know, you were driving me nuts. <laughs> but, but, I, can but, I, but the whole time I'm thinking, Play, Paige, please answer her. She was driving me nuts too. Can so. I just say though that that clinic, that, that first clinic was absolutely awesome um, because you just learned a couple things and I, I will never forget you coming down flame out going, I jumped that! I jumped that! I didn't mean to! I didn't know how! But I'm like, well, because you found where to be on your bike! Yeah! And it just, I was in the air! And yeah, it was amazing. Amazing! Huck, huck and hope, right? Yeah. And so, I kept bugging Paige and I'm like, let's do a clinic, let's do a clinic. So what I would do is help put it all together. Paige would Well, remember, it. I had surgery. I had just, I had shoulder surgery. Yes. She's, and, and so Jenny's here. Let's do a clinic. I'm like, I ha I am having my shoulder rebuilt, and I can't I ride that. right now. So I'll be your demo person. I'll be your demo person. <laughs> and so, you know, she kept pushing and pushing. Do you like the dog barking? Yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I, want, see. I want to podcast, too. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, pushing and pushing. And finally, so I, I did surgery October 4th. And finally, and she's, when, are, can we, when can we have a clinic? When can we have a clinic? I'm like, okay. It's like December, I think. We can schedule something in January. She's like, are you riding yet? I'm like, no, I'm not riding yet, but I'll figure it out by then. So I think, yeah, we scheduled our first yeah. our first clinic last January. Yep. Um, and we weren't really working in this capacity. Um, mostly it was you saying, well, will you teach clinics yeah. if I bring people to you? Exactly. And you just kept forming clinics. You just kept... You kept finding people. <laughs> because and I would throw myself in the rotation, and yes, I would yes, learn from you, yes. like I would and learn that, alongside everybody else. And that was kind of the deal. It's like, well, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> if, if you keep bringing me people to coach, and you keep, you know, forming these clinics, of course, I'm going to give you coaching um, yeah. all along the way. So. And I remember I signed up for the IMBA Level 1 on my own. 
I just kept plugging away at it and bugging Paige and trying to um, trying to put clinics together, do a lot of outreach. And I remember when you said to me, okay, I'm in. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, have you not been in this whole time? And you're like, listen, there's been people that have been bugging me to do this for years. And once the time and the effort, the work effort comes into play, they usually couldn't do it. People did it. leave. People <laughs> do not do what they say they're going to do. <laughs> They've got big plans. And then as soon as it get hard, gets hard, they're out the door and they don't put the time in. And fact of the matter is doing this job, you do a lot of work for free. Yeah. And you do a lot of work that you don't want to. And people don't understand. They think, oh, you're just doing these clinics. Well, there's all this prep to the clinics. There's, there's time off of a real job because fact of the matter is when you're getting this going, you are not paying the bills. And so you've got another job somewhere. Yeah. You've got a family somewhere. And they also, they also don't realize that you, you probably realize this now. You're prepping the course. You're prepping the area you're going to yeah. use. You're dealing with insurance, you're dealing with landowners, you're yeah, finding right. a place where you can actually do this coaching. Yeah. Oh, and then you have to go do some marketing to get some people into your clinic. <laughs> yeah. And you just spent all this time doing training. Yeah. You spent your own money and your own time to be trained so that you could train them. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's an incredible amount of work as I, <laughs> as I quickly found out. And I was so I don't know if you remember, Justin, when I said to you that she was in, that page was fine. Oh, I in. totally remember that day. I was so <laughs> stoked. I was like, oh my God, okay, she has a partner now. I just <laughs> She'll leave like, me alone. I did it. I did it. I, you converted me. I you wore her down. <laughs> well, and I just had so much respect for Paige, and she's such an important part of this. Oh, if we you. don't... The, what I wanted to do was not just skill building. It was, it was, I wanted to bring the mountain biking experience to women. And a big part of that though, is the skill building because women want skills. They don't want to get hurt. They want to know how to do stuff. And I needed Paige for that. And Paige's incredible insight and experience. I was just so excited to have her on board so that we could have the the clinics and we, well, and the, I think the one thing that was different about you from other people who had either approached me or had big plans in the past, you actually followed through. You actually followed through with the things you were going to, that, that you said you wanted to do. And you bent over backwards to learn. You, I mean, you <laughs> bent over backwards to learn and you stayed with it. And it, it, I think you have a lot of things that I don't have is reason things that I reasons I haven't been successful in the past or, or things that you bring to the table. Um, so I think that we work really well. I don't think that we're necessarily opposites, but maybe the skills that we bring here are opposite. Yeah. I think we're, pro I think we're probably a lot alike, <laughs> but our, our skill set is, is different enough that it makes us round pretty well rounded. what they would call a synergy exactly yeah yeah and we'll have to save this for another podcast about i've never had someone talk me off the ledge in mountain biking like page can <laughs> and when i've had bad days with coaching or my own writing you have said to me everyone has their place and i think we found our place within this company to make it what we want and we each have our place and we each have our strengths and it complements really well to each other. And so I think it's just amazing. We have the skill building clinics. We're doing our retreats that have been super fun um, to plan for. We have the online forum that we launched um, to bring women together. And so it feels like it's all coming together and it's a pretty amazing hard journey, that is for sure. It was like the sound that from the Dow Jane or something. Yeah, yeah I was and like, that is yeah. Bad. yeah. Game over. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> so, what do you guys get out of this? Like the coaching, all this hard work that you guys put in. Um, it, we know you're not in it for the money because I'm in you're it not to ride going my to bike. be. Well, no. Okay. 
I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> Up and down green runs all day long? No. Okay. I'm in, so. it, to, I'm in it to ride my downhill bike off big jumps. No. Okay. Well, yeah, that too, but there's some other I'm stuff I'm in it to also. perfect the little down Toe me in, Paige. Toe me in. <laughs> <laughs> it was, didn't we just do that? I'm like, do you want to tell me? Yes, yes. Was I Paige has to tell think, me in all the time. Yeah, I think, <laughs> that, was, I think that was on Boondocks. <laughs> I'm going, who's going to tell me in, damn it? <laughs> okay, so what do you guys get out of it? I So you know that feeling when you can't get through an obstacle. So you can't get over a rock or whatever. You can't do a feature. Then you go back. And you go and you make it. You make it through that rock garden. Nothing beats that feeling. Nothing beats that feeling. And I just want to share that feeling with everybody that I coach. I want them to experience it because it, it's seriously like an elation I've never felt before in anything else. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think it, it's, it might be a little different for me because the bike is such an important part of my life. It's been here in my life for so long. Um, like I said, I started riding um, in 1991, 92. I started racing. Um, I've tried to get away from it. I've been irritated with the industry. I've been irritated with bikes. I've tried to get away from it, and I always come back to this damn bike. But this damn bike has given me so much in my life. Um, it's given me strength and independence, and it's taken me places. It's ta- I mean, it's taken me all over the country. It's taken me to Canada. It's taken me. It's taken me so many different places, um, physically and mentally and spiritually as well. And so I think that's what I like to give people: the fact that I'm not scared to go do things. And a lot of it has to do with that I bailed my ass out of places on my bike totally alone. Maybe I'm injured. Maybe I'm in the dark. I don't know. Take your, pick your poison (laughs) as to what it's going to be. But I know that all of those experiences and figuring it out on my bike has given me that self-esteem and independence. And I want every woman, well, I want every person, but I really want every woman to feel that, that, that if they want to go do something, they can, and they don't need to ask permission from anyone Absolutely. They they have the ability to do this, and maybe sometimes they just need a little push and a little encouragement. Absolutely. The challenge of learning skills on a bike is what made me, when I gave up running, it was just so heart-wrenching. I just missed it so much. And it was my life, and I needed... And then you found something so much better. It was. <laughs> It was a whole new challenge, and uh, it was amazing, and it really saved me at that time. And so I, I completely understand um, what you're saying, you know. And that's just like I want to share that, and I want I want us to increase the demographic because there should be just as many women in the sport as there are men. It's just that's just I would like that to be the norm, and not. Um, right now where you you don't see hundreds of women just biking out there you just don't you know teach and, your little girls to ride yep and so i want to spread that um knowledge and get other people into the sport yeah women girls um which is you know another podcast about racing we'll talk about that <laughs> i definitely and and we'll probably talk about this one to expand on it more i, I one thing that i really love about coaching, um, especially as I've aged. When I was in my 20s, I definitely had blinders on, and I raced, and really I thought there was not, going fast, that's, going fast and going big was kind of what it was, Um, and definitely as I've aged, I ride differently. I still ride the same stuff, but I also ride different stuff, and I ride with different people now, too, and I think that if you're someone who likes to be outside, you're someone who likes to hike, anything like that, you can ride a bike also. And it just, it opens a whole new world for so many people who didn't think they could do it mm-hmm. before. Yeah. That you can go further. You can you can go further and be more alone or be more embraced, however you want to look at it. Yep. 
I think that's the things that I notice most kind of helping out with the clinics and just being there taking pictures. I, you know, I don't have an official job besides being the shuttle biatch. I was going to say, you but you know I shuttle. Title. I shuttle. I load the bikes. I'll oh, check on, the bikes. I'll do the bike checks. Come on. You run the forum. You're the, you run the forum and the techie guy, but really. But, yeah. But really. The bike I don't check really that takes job. too long. All right. Now, all right. I'm just safety first, damn it. But the things, the things that I notice just no, observing no, no, them first, sorry. Is, uh, is just, like you said, watching people progress. And they go into it with literally, in some cases, tears on their face because they're scared to do an obstacle. And then to see them go through it, uh, you know, they get coached through it, they get the confidence, and all of a sudden, wham, they made it. And it's this whole new level for them. Um, and I keep thinking in the back of my head, you know, I want to go fast. I want to charge hard. I'm looking for the most techy, gnarly stuff I can ride. But not everybody rides like that. There are people who are just as happy to pedal down a trail on their lightweight bike and just be in nature. And what you guys are doing is you're giving or providing that skill base for the hardcore, I'm going to go run an enduro or a downhill race next year, or the person that just wants to cruise around Granite Bay. Mm-hmm. They're getting yeah. that safety skill set to keep them safe no matter where they want to ride or when they want to ride. And to me, that was kind of cool. I I didn't think of it in those terms. I thought clinics are for people who want to race, you know, who want to just charge downhill at breakneck speed, but watching the people Clinics are for everyone. They're They're fully for for everybody. They're for everyone. Yeah. And that your clinics are filled with people from all disciplines of mountain biking and everybody gets along and has a great time and they learn. And All disciplines and all ages. Too. And ages. And that blows me away, too. I think that's the too. thing that's really cool. So yeah. those were things that I noticed and I thought was something I didn't think about clinics going into it. And then afterwards going, this is a whole lot different and better than I ever thought it could have been. Yeah, you go in kind of with your blinders or your sights, your narrow sights as to what you're doing with it and realize... There are so many other people out there. I know, because sometimes we look at the bike manufacturers and we're like, why would they build this many different bikes? Why do we need all of these bikes? And uh, then you realize, oh, because there are that many different <laughs> kinds of people that ride. And some some people like to... hardtails. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand it. But <laughs> So where do you go from here? We go to Moab from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we have um, some retreats coming up in 2018. We will be going to Moab. We're very excited about that. Uh, You're taking your car, right? Not my truck. I know. We're taking that truck. <sighs> um, and then we, I have, so I. Well, one time we're taking the car, but then one time we're probably taking both <laughs> trucks. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go scope it out first. So we get to ride it. Um, so we have retreats coming up in 2018. We have skill building clinics coming up. Um, we're going to go to Humboldt. We're going to go to Humboldt. Humboldt County. We have rides we will be posting. And then we are going to be adding quite a bit more content to our website. And this is one of them, the podcast. You know, I get the uh, privilege of talking to Paige all the time and <laughs> getting all of this um amazing uh, advice that she has in the in her rants. There's some really cool stuff that comes out of that, and I'm like, no one else gets to hear this. Those, and are, not, those are not rants. That's what what I just did a minute ago was a rant, but when we talk, it's not always a rant. So that's where the podcast, I'm like, okay, can I just give you a topic and go? And so that's what we're going to be doing with these podcasts. Is we need to do that when we're riding. Yes, you know, we do. Because that's when... That's when the brains. I'd like to record some of the stuff that we just talk about sometimes, like when you were making fun of my shoes when we went and scoped out Woodward, and I didn't wear appropriate shoes. Um. (laughs) Girls, okay, here, here we girls and clothing. We'll have a whole podcast on that and what kind of shoes you wear. Where? Is this kind of like not wearing your half lid at North Star? Yes, yes. in my fanny pack. Don't wear. Cute little, they were really cute. girly shoes. When you got to go hiking through the dirt, <laughs> they were. I looked cute though. They Proper were cute attire. shoes. Yes. But I had a hard time, and she's like, "Well, if you'd wear sensible shoes, you could walk faster." <laughs> so, podcast, blogs, articles. Paige started doing the quick pro tips for all of us. Um, yeah. So we're just excited to bring as much as we can about mountain biking. Yeah, and so I guess if if you guys have ideas you'd like to talk about, 
uh, podcasts or blogs or just questions, um, absolutely send them our way. So you can find us at www.mtbexp.com and on Facebook. We do have a uh, women's only private Facebook group, which is Women's MTB Experience. Instagram and MTB EXP and Jenny Bolts and Rampage MTB. And the forum. Join the forum. Join the forum. That's where you, forum. you can talk around the fire pit about anything you want to talk about mountain biking related. There's also region specific forums if you want to get to know people in your area. Um, and I think I'm about to add one that I think I'm going to go with an idea we had from a member of uh, what he said. I think I'm going to add forum. <gasps> oh. oh, that's awesome. And I have some from Justin. Huck it to flat. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.